Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Today, we're taking questions from you, our viewers. You know then, it's Monday and it's a live show. So give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you are outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook, Amen. Jim and Joy Pinto, we're there. Well, you know it's Monday and we have a question. It's Lent and we're taking a journey and we want to know how is loss, sadness, or grief informing your Lenten mm -hmm. journey? And we are familiar in our own lives with loss and sadness and grief on our Lenten journeys. And um, so we just want to hear from you. We've got some beautiful emails. Yeah. We want you to give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. I really do want to hear from you how that relates to yourself personally. Or maybe it's for someone else. Or maybe it's for Jesus as he walks that road during the season of Lenten and Holy Week. Well, Joy, we had a wonderful several days. We really did. We took a Lenten different. journey a retreat. Lenten journey. Went mm -hmm. down to the Gulf area right on the border of Florida and Alabama, some of the most beautiful beaches and emerald water. And it was a little cool in because it was February, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. We um, left Ash Wednesday after work. Yeah, but it was so wonderful to be there and just, you know, being near water and the, the sound of water versus being in the midst of the city you know, where we live and uh, being able to do our special devotions. You know, we're doing the consecration of St. Joseph. And then we, we read a, a book by one of our guests that we're going to have this week, Walking Through Holy Week. Mm -hmm. Walking Through Holy Week is the name of the book, a journey, uh, you know, with, with the Lord, especially during Holy Week. It's just a great time, just great to be alone, a lonely place to rest a while. You got yourself a bike when uh, yes, you were down there. I got a bike. Well, I always rent a bike and... Um, take a six mile ride every single day, which I love. And it just, it recreates, it refreshes, it restores, it renews yeah. me. Yeah. And um, one thing we did decide was, it took us, a, we hadn't gone away in a while and we're usually pretty good about going away to a lonely place to rest a while um, because you had your back injury and you couldn't walk, it wasn't, fun to go away and so we kind of uh, stayed still and stayed near but um but just to get out of town i had spinal fusion surgery about five or six months ago but right. i walked 90 minutes you on did this i know it i was mean so, so it's wonderful. really coming along no, so well it was it was beautiful it was and good. we had great weather nobody was down there yet you know the it's not the uh spring breakers aren't down there yet so it was really kind of desolate mm. lovely um, and we have a lot of personal memories there because we've been going to this one particular place for 40 years. And so, yeah. you know, you go to the sites and you see your yeah. children three years yeah. old, and but now they're men and, and they have their own a, kids. There's a dock there or a deck there where you can, you know, get your boat out into the water. And that's the, the dock yes. on which my son caught his first fish. Yes. Right? He, and he nearly had a heart attack when he yeah, caught his He was his screaming. First and the fish, fish was jumping around and fell in between the wooden planks yeah. that were there. And we lost them so quick. Yeah. Um, and then another time there was something with a fish and we were trying to bring it up and I was laying down on the dock and pulling it up and our twins were there, Anna and Rebecca. And Rebecca was, oh, he's going to fall in, he's going to fall in. And Anna said, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> it was I, perfect. I, it's all those memories. Yeah. There. And then our granddaughter caught her first fish there. Yeah, yeah. And the water down there is just so beautiful and so placid you know, in mm -hmm. so many ways and, and uh, a lot of great memories of their special place that we return to again. Yeah. And, again. and you know now our children go on vacation and they take our grandchildren there. Mm -hmm. So and so they're creating all their own memories and um, so it's very special but what happened to our interior lives I think was the best thing because we were really in need of rest. Mm -hmm. We were really in need of a of a retreat and they have a fabulous Catholic church down there. We had fabulous meals. And um, I feel 
restored, renewed, repaired, yeah. refreshed, and I, I feel reset, and I'm excited about Lent. And we had a beautiful dance out on the deck we in the evening We did, well, under the fun. stars. We had a nice little dance, which was fun. So, so it was great. So we encourage you to maybe get a Lenten retreat. It just might be for a few hours or a day to go someplace, to a quiet place, and to seek the face of God. How is loss, sadness, or grief informing your Lenten journey? It may be your loss, sadness, or grief, it may be for someone else. It may be on the journey with Jesus. Call us now, 1-800-221-9460. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. taking your questions today. So you're watching, you know it's a live broadcast. It's Monday, give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you are outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. Always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com or check us out on Facebook. And the question for today's show, how is loss, sadness, or grief informing your Lenten journey. Yeah. And you know, hon, going away for me um, is helpful because I was able to get quiet and get in touch with some of my pain, get in touch with some of my loss, get in touch with some of my grief. You know, sometimes our lives are very full and busy as everyone's lives are. Mm. And um, you just kind of keep going, you know, and just like, I got it, I'm good. You yeah. know, you just kind of keep going. but. But to sit and to be and to read and to pray, yeah. um, it, it awakens. It's like, oh, these feelings are there. And that might be raw. Yeah. Um, we've certainly had losses of loved ones, uh, friends, and grief and sadness. And, and, it, and it gives yeah. time yeah. to allow that to come up, to bring it before the Lord to say, this is inside of me and I ache I, and weep. Yeah. and maybe even cry, you know. So you said it was beautiful to do that, to have the opportunity to do that in a beautiful place, getting away. And sometimes you can't get away. Sometimes you just have to get away in your mind mm -hmm. and in your heart and, and, and being diligent with your daily devotions and prayer or going to, through the liturgy of the hours, whatever it might be. Because like you said, that loss, that sadness, that grief, whether it's yours or for someone else or thinking about Holy Week, it's all there. But then, then to have that surface in the midst of the victory of Christ. Yes. In the midst of the joy. You know, for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. That in the midst of loss, grief, sorrows, um, that we should have joy. Mm -hmm. And we speak about that in, in pro-life spirituality. We speak about... Um, a joyful sorrow, right. a joy, what, what are you talking about, a joyful sorrow? Joy is a byproduct from doing all things in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in this world, you're gonna have tribulation. In this world, you can have loss and sadness and grief and betrayal and rejection and whatever it might be, or somebody else's and you're suffering for your child or for somebody else who you love. But be of good cheer, I've overcome this world. And so we give all that to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it says in the Holy Scriptures that he was a man acquainted well with grief and with sorrow. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a man of sorrows. And so especially in this holy season of Lent, where so much of it is about walking the way of the cross, going the way of the cross with Jesus, being with him, that if we could just give all of this in, mm -hmm. this is why he came. Jesus came to forgive us. Jesus came for conversion. Jesus came to defeat that final enemy who is death mm -hmm. to defeat him so that's why we're asking how is your sense of loss sadness grief or for someone else working its way out in season of life this is the time to give mm -hmm. it to him he's come mm -hmm. to this yeah. he's come to bear these burdens joy we have a phone call uh marguerite is on the phone marguerite welcome to at home with jim and joy your question or your comment 
Yes, good morning. I'm calling from Peoria, Illinois, and we lost my dear aunt back in November, and she was 96 years old, mm -hmm. um, three months shy of her 97th birthday, and there are seven of us that live at home, but she was 11 in our family, and now that she's passed on, there is such a deep, mm. deep, profound silence in the house. Yes. And there are seven of us, and I'm a child of the resurrection. I actually look forward to dying. Mm. I know what there is to come, thank God, because of our faith. But, and I thought this was, this was going to take a little while and it'd be over with, mm. but I know we're all dealing with it differently. But like I said, the house is so profoundly mm. silent. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Well, Marguerite, thank you so much for calling. And when we've had, like you said, an aunt or a loved one in our family and their force of life and love mm. among us on this planet, um, there's a great void. And that is real. And you feel that void. And, you, and you, sometimes you don't even know uh, while you're living and being with them, how powerful their force is yeah. here in life and in love. And, and there's nothing that can replace that. And when you are in mourning and grief and sorrow, and when you are widowed and maybe you've been in a long marriage, and that loneliness is profound to be lonely and the quiet and... There's other people making noise. There's other people who are present, but you're not hearing that loved one's voice and you're not feeling or being with that loved one's spirit. That it's beautifully happens. Said. Yes. Beautifully said. And, but this is the season especially that the Lord wants us to give that loss, mm -hmm. that grief, that unique person, that irreplaceable person. Um, but to do that with a sense of yes. joy, to do that with a sense, she says, you know, I'm a resurrection That's person. That's right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, Lent is meant to prepare us for the ultimate, mm -hmm. which is the resurrection. Mm -hmm. We are an Easter people. Uh, St. John Paul II said, we are an Easter people. We're not necessarily a Lenten people. Right. Jesus didn't die on the cross and that was the end of the story. No, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be betrayed and be rejected and die, mm -hmm. be killed. But after three days... He'll rise again. Right. So it's all that, all that together. And this is the time, this is the season to, to bear it with the Lord, to mm -hmm. give it over to the Lord. Joy, we have an email. It says, Lent has been a valuable tool to help our family put everything in perspective. Our home was destroyed by fire and we lost everything. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God, our family was safe. And it's been a slow rebuild to where we were before, but we're making progress. And the season of Lent now helps us, especially our children, to focus on the world to come instead of the <laughs> temporary one we reside in now. And this is Hannah from Creston, Iowa. Beautiful. That is well said, right? And you yeah. hear that from people who go through um, traumas like that, be they fire or hurricanes or tornadoes, mm. um, things that happen and all of a sudden everything gets put in perspective as to the value of your living uh, the value of your dying, the value of everything that you love. Guess yeah. what? It's people. Yeah. It's not this stuff that yeah. we strive to acquire. In the end, it's all rubbish. It doesn't matter. No. There's many memories there, though, yes. right? I mean, when, when I go back from Birmingham to New Jersey, where do we go? Back to the house I was raised in, back mm -hmm. to the house you were raised in. Mm -hmm. There's something about place. There's yeah. something about... But this world is passing away, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all these are, are signs that this is not permanent. You right. know, whether it's a person, things we really value, things that are so important to us, but there's degrees of, of importance. And then it finally says, you know, in my father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If this weren't so, would I have told you I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, then I'll come back for you mm. and I'll take you to be with me that where I am, you will be also. So our homes here are, are indicators that there's another home up there. Right. Because everything's passing away. Everything's temporary. Everyone's passing away. And mm -hmm. you try to collect it. You try to stop it. I, I try to do that. One day I, you know, I repair our home again and again and again, right? Do this, do that. And it keeps breaking. I'm saying to God, I can't keep it going because this world is passing. It doesn't mean that you don't cherish some things right. here and so on. But, but there's another home. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's another place. And how you live here is has a lot to say about where you're going, but keep your eyes on 
the prize, right? right? And that's the journey of Lent. We detach only to attach ourselves you know? more and more. We have Madeline on the phone. Madeline, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment? Okay. Uh, what I noticed about uh, my um, process of grieving is that my prayer life is being influenced during mm. Lent. I lost a sister to pancreatic mm. cancer, no. and I lost my husband about a year and a half ago. Mm. And I find myself praying for their souls to mm. be transferred from purgatory to heaven. You Amen. know, I want the, everybody in my family to be in heaven. Mm. You know? And yes. now, this is how grief is influencing me. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. beautiful. You know, and that's true. You know, Madeline, and we pray. We pray for our loved ones, and we enter in in that beautiful Lenten journey that we too would attach ourselves to our heavenly home, to our Lord, to our loved ones that you do. You want everybody in heaven with you. And you know, um, I, when sometimes we dream of our loved ones or we, we have a dream of um, friends of ours or people that we've known, um, it's a real dream. It's like, why did I dream? That was a random dream. Why did that person come? And I usually always share that with you. But I pray. My same response is of Madeline. I pray for their final destination to be in the arms of Jesus. Mm. And, and it's always refreshing to see that person because every person that I've ever dreamed of who died, they look fabulous. <laughs> they, look, they look better than the best version of themselves here on earth. And it's like, Wow, that is so beautiful, and you pray for them. So, yes, and that's part of your Lenten journey is to, to give that sorrow, sadness over to the Lord and, and to pray our loved ones into his arms. That's a great question. How is loss, sadness, and grief informing? She hit it, she hit it perfectly. Yeah. I lost my husband. I lost mm -hmm. my sister. And so now my prayer is so influenced by thinking of them and praying for them, that they can come into all the fullness. They might have all the fullness already. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But she's saying, I, I love them. And how prayer ties us all together. How we really are a communion mm -hmm. of, of saints and souls together. That death doesn't stop that. We continue to be united in this way. And maybe this will become a big part of your Lent. Yeah. You know, we're thinking, what, what do I do in terms of almsgiving and fasting and prayer? But what are we doing with, with loss and with grief and with sadness and with death and with, or just loss, you know, w with us over the years? Um, I could say something funny. You were the most athletic in high school. I was the best dancer, right? Mm -hmm. and every, you know, and then you have a heart attack, right? right. And th then you get cancer. It almost takes your life. And then you get spinal fusion surgery, right? Mm -hmm. You ain't dancing all that long anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a sense of loss. You know, right. you look at yourself and say, oh, that ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. and that's never coming back. That was a great time. It's never going to be again. Right. And it's a sense like, uh-oh, so I just get stuck or am I angry about that or whatever? Or Lord, what's happening right now, Lord? Mm -hmm. Who am I now? And, and what are you doing now? I can't live in the past. I have to live in the now and I have to set my face towards the future, Lord. But, but I feel lost. Mm -hmm. I feel sadness about this. Or it's just sadness about the state of the world and what's going on within the church. And, we work at a crisis pregnancy center and we're seeing people that you know are coming for abortions mm -hmm. not that we do those we, we try to give them every resource that they would choose life who's grieving for the 60 million babies that have been aborted these women that have been entrapped in this that think it's the only solution there's a lot of sadness and if mm -hmm. all we do is sit in the sadness and in the right. loss instead of I can do all things in him who strengthens me. You know, right. Even if you slay me or you slay my love, you know, I'm, go I'm gonna love you, Lord, mm -hmm. because there is a resurrection. There's, there's Good Friday, but Sundays are coming, right? Right, yeah. and, and we have to. We have to stay always present in the word, doing all the sacraments in the church that offers us that our, our souls would be fueled. Now, Warren's on the phone. Warren, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment? Warren, are you there? Oh, Maureen is my name. Oh, okay, name. I'm sorry. They wrote it up wrong. Maureen, are you there? Maureen, wait a minute. Maureen Crossan. Okay. okay, go right ahead. I was a social worker for 30 years. I have followed Jesus' lead to a T, caring about other people. I got married to someone that left me for another woman. Mm. I, live in, I live in hell because of that, and he has everything he wants. And so does the woman who manipulated him into their relationship. Mm. That is my point. My point is I live in hell mm. because of it. Mm. 
He doesn't, but I do. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, thank you for your honesty, and I'm sorry. I think what comes to mind for me, you can never deny your suffering and the realities. When I think about the cross of Christ, I focus upon two key words when he speaks about the cross, betrayal and rejection. Mm. And you, you've been betrayed, you've been rejected. Jesus was betrayed and rejected. I pray to God that this, this Lenten season and Holy Week for you will be a time where you could unite that mm. to him yes. so that you wouldn't live in hell, but there would be a touch of heaven that would come into your hell mm. and that, that heaven is greater than hell. Yes. And love is greater than betrayal. No denying the realities that you have, but somehow, some way, Christ would minister that to you. Thank you so much for your call. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everyone that's participated. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, during Lent, some people make the mistake thinking they have to perform tremendous acts of service to impress God mm -hmm. and then feel discouraged when they feel they don't measure up. Well, Greg and Lisa Popchek explain how it's the little things that we do every day that please God. Mm -hmm. A friend of ours once said, I wish I could do something great for God. She felt that her role as a wife and mom just wasn't enough. I mean, intellectually, she recognized that raising a family was important, but her heart just felt like what she did didn't measure up. We all have a tendency to underestimate the spiritual power of our role as moms and dads. But a while back, I had an experience that shifted my perspective forever. I was helping one of our children prepare for his first Holy Communion, and we were going over the corporal works of mercy, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting the sick, and so on. And when I finished reading this list, my son said, you do all those things every day. They should call them the corporal works of mommy. Well, his reaction had a powerful effect on both of us. How often do parents think of the things we do to take care of our homes and kids as just stuff to get done? instead of actually seeing them as spiritual exercises. To be merciful to someone means to treat them in the manner that reminds them of their worth in God's eyes. Practicing the corporal works of mommy, and daddy too, reminds us that feeding, clothing, and sheltering our kids isn't about slavishly getting something on the table or dutifully paying the bills. It's about bearing God's love to the people he's given us to serve. And let's face it, when you're tired and stressed and busy, that's no easy task, but it is a holy one. The desire to do great things for God is a beautiful thing. As the psalmist says, how can I repay the Lord for all the good he has done for me? But in your desire to do great things for God, try not to forget St. Therese's reminder that the most beautiful way to serve the Lord is to do small things with great love. That might not win us any awards, but it will allow us to show God's loving face to the least among us, our children. To find more ways to connect with God's grace at home, check out our book, The Corporal Works of Mommy and Daddy Too. Well, words of wisdom from the Pop Checks, and it's been a great privilege for Joy and I to share with you today and to address that question of how is how is loss, sadness, grief impacting, informing your Lent? And uh, I think of the words of Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs. Surely he has carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we're healed. Mm. What a great faith. May the Lord meet you in the midst of where you really are in your life this season of Lent. You're an important part of the family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now. <laughs>